Hi, welcome to Flights of Fancy Storytime. Usually, when the National Air and Space Museum is open, I read stories and do craft activities in the museum's galleries. We thought we would bring some of our museum stories to you at home. Today we have a special guest storyteller. Some of my friends at the museum wrote a book together called Pluto's Secret, An Icy World's Tale of Discovery. Margaret Wedekamp and David Devorkin are the authors who had the ideas and wrote the words, and Diane Kidd created the illustrations. You might have seen Diane's illustrations in our other stories. Margaret is going to read the book today, and then I'll be back for craft time. So here's Margaret. Well, then why don't we read our book? This is Pluto's Secret, an icy world's tale of discovery. For as long as the solar system has been the solar system and Earth has been Earth, there has been a little icy world circling the sun farther away than any of the planets. This icy world had a secret, a clue about something that exists in the solar system and the universe. But for a long time, no one on Earth could see this icy world. It was too far away, not bright enough to be seen in the sky, and so no one learned its secret. The icy world didn't mind. It was busy dancing with its moons. Cha, 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 cha. In the early 1900s, Percival Lowell, a very wealthy man from Boston, decided to look for a ninth planet. He knew that eight planets went around the sun. They were, you can count them with me, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And of course, Earth, the planet that Percival was standing on. Along with other astronomers, people who study the universe and how it works, Percival believed that something was pulling on the paths or orbits of Uranus and Neptune. He had already built the Lowell Observatory in Arizona to study Mars. Now he ordered his staff of astronomers to search for a new planet beyond Neptune. What is out there? He asked. There must be another planet, a great big one, a bully that's causing all this trouble, that's bothering Uranus and Neptune was Percival's answer to himself. I shall call this mysterious planet, Planet X. Planet X? A great big one, thought the little icy world? <laughs> That's not right. Wait until they see how lightly I dance with my moon Sharon, the tiny tots Nix and Hydra, and the other little ones. Besides, I'm not bothering anyone. The icy world kept doing what it liked to do, spin on its side. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Percival's astronomers looked and looked for Planet X. After Percival died in 1916, they looked even harder. They wanted to prove that Percival had been right. In the late 1920s, the Lowell Observatory hired a young fellow named Clyde Tombaugh to keep on searching. With a powerful new telescopic camera, Clyde took pictures of the night sky where he was told the new planet might be. Finally, in 1930, he found something. In one of the pictures, Clyde saw a very small dot among thousands of other dots of many sizes, the stars. A few days later, another picture of the same area showed the same dot, but this time it was in a different place. Clyde knew that planets do that. They appear to move among the stars. The word planet comes from the Greek word for wanderer. Hello, Earth, said the icy world. But Clyde couldn't hear as he was very, very far away. I have found planet X, Clyde said. There is a ninth planet in our solar system, declared Lowell's astronomers on March 13th, 1930. They wanted to tell everyone the exciting news on what would have been Percival Lowell's birthday. People from all over the world suggested names for the new planet. What about Minerva? No, said the astronomers. Certainly not. 
thought the icy little world. How about Cronus? Nope, said the astronomers. Yikes, said the icy world. That's not me. Zeus? Atlas? Lowell? No, 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 said the astronomers. Yuck, thought the little world. Then, 11-year-old Venetia Burney from Oxford, England, suggested the name Pluto. Because, said Venetia, whose class had studied the Greek and Roman gods as well as the solar system, Pluto is the Roman god of the dark underworld. The new little planet is so far from the sun that it must be a cold, dark place, too. I like that, thought the icy world, which was now named Pluto. But a planet, Pluto thought, just like the other planets? <laughs> That's not correct. None of the other planets are as little as I am. And the other planets all have very ordinary flat orbits around the sun, like a tabletop. My orbit is much more fun. It tips up like a slide in the playground. Whee! The astronomers soon learned that Pluto did not always stay in its place. Sometimes it even switched places with Neptune, coming closer to the sun than Neptune did. Hey, yelled the astronomers. Planets cannot do that. Well, I can and I do, Pluto giggled. Remember, the icy world Pluto had a secret, a clue about what exists at the outer edges of the solar system and across the universe. You still have not figured me out, sang Pluto. Keep trying. Many years after Clyde Tombaugh first found Pluto, when astronomers were looking at the icy world with newer, more powerful telescopes, they saw that it was not alone. Pluto had friends in orbits very much like its own. This meant that there were other icy worlds. Some of Pluto's friends were just about as big as it was. Say cheese, Pluto told its friends as the various high-powered telescopes took their picture. Astronomers named the area where these new objects orbited the Kuiper Belt, after the astronomer who first predicted it, Gerard Kuiper. The Kuiper Belt was a whole new part of the solar system. Now you're getting closer, Pluto smiled. You're on the right track. Ah, oh, Pluto, the astronomers sighed. You're not like the other planets. We sometimes wonder if you should even be called a planet. And then they thought, huh, what exactly is a planet? Amazingly, no one had ever set up rules about what a planet was or was not. In 2006, because of Pluto, the astronomers voted on a definition. Planets have to orbit the sun, the astronomers decided. I go around the sun in an orbit, thought Pluto. Planets have to be round, like a ball, said the astronomers. I'm round, Pluto thought. Each planet has to be alone in its orbit. But my friends are with me. We all go around the sun in the Kuiper belt. Then Pluto is not a planet the astronomers declared. And what does Pluto think? Pluto thinks, bingo! Some people were sad that Pluto was not called a planet anymore. We heart Pluto, size doesn't matter, not fair, no, no. But Pluto didn't mind. It liked orbiting with its friends. You figured it out, Pluto reassured them. I'm not a planet. I'm the first example of something new. I'm one of many icy worlds on the outer edge of the solar system. Pluto thought that it was fun that so many people were wondering about what to call it now, perhaps dwarf planet or maybe Kuiper Belt object. I'm not worried. Whatever you call me, I'm fine out here, said Pluto. But Pluto held clues to more than just our solar system. As astronomers looked for planets around other stars, they saw bands of icy worlds around other stars too. Ha, my secret is out, said Pluto. Not only do I have friends here, but there are also bands of icy worlds just like me around other stars all over the universe. Pluto had helped astronomers to define what a planet is and also to recognize the icy worlds around other stars. In 2015, the New Horizons spacecraft was Pluto's first visitor from Earth. Oh, I'm so excited, says Pluto. I may even have some other secrets to reveal. Get ready. Cha-cha-cha. And that's our book. 
And we had a chance in the back here, if you get a chance to look, we had a chance to get pictures of the real thing. So that's Percival Lowell with his telescope and then Clyde Tombaugh with his photographic plates, and that's the real telescope that Clyde Tombaugh used to find Pluto. These are the real plates that were used, and over here then you can see Venetia Burney, the real 11-year-old who got to name this planet. So that's our book, Pluto's Secret. I hope that you've enjoyed it, and we'll talk to you soon. It's craft time. Today we're going to do some icy crafts. I have uh, some ice cubes that I created and um, my ice cube tray, put some water in and then I added some food coloring into the ice cube tray and then we can use those ice cubes uh, just like paints to paint our paper so we can get uh, a color out. Let's see. Ooh, that was fun. Now I'm going to use a paper towel to hold it so I don't get the color on my fingers and also it's a little cold. Now Pluto is an icy world so it's kind of fun to try painting with ice paints. It looks a little different from other paints you might use. Uh, let me show you what my drawing looks like, my painting looks like. Wow, it's kind of fun. Now, we're going to use our icy paintings to make an icy world uh, ball or model. So I made some yesterday. Here's one I made yesterday. And another one that I made yesterday. Wow, that's pretty fun. And we can use this the same way we did before when we were creating our earth balls. We can create a Pluto ball. So you're just going to crunch it up again and maybe we want to do two make it a little bit bigger there Pluto's pretty small so that's a nice one and then we can use packing tape today instead of masking tape and just tear it off I'm gonna use my old scissors again and cut it and if we cover the whole ball up with packing tape, it kind of gives it an icy look. I have one that I made and I put a little heart on it because Pluto has a little heart they found on the New Horizons spacecraft that Pluto has a heart form on it. So this is my little Pluto ball and I think that you'll enjoy making one. And thanks for joining us today. Bye-bye.